This is a history of the Earth. I studied this for quite a while and I put together all the pieces that I can from the Bible, from uh, the, the um, Sumerian tablets, from carvings, from stone, from, and, and I have done a lot of research in addition to that in chemistry, which I have proven that there was literally giants in the earth, exactly what they say. And I have had them DNA tested, parts of them CAT scan, and multiple DNA tests, many uh, CAT scans, anatomist testimony uh, that it's real, world famous anatomist, and it recreated the chemistry in the lab. So there's no question that what I'm saying is factual. There were giants on the earth, and I have them here, and they can easily be tested. Now, let's talk about the history then. So I know that the history is not correct that we've been taught, and I don't think anybody really believes it. Now, let's go back to when did things start. And here is the Sumerian King's List. This is in stone, you know, it's, a, it's an inscribed tablet that has all of the kings that were uh, in Sumeria. And this goes back 450,000 years. Now, I know you laugh, oh, 450,000 years. Well, this was all transcribed, uh, uh, translated from the tablets, and here's where it starts. And, and you have to read the, the text. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of these tablets, and there and, and are multiple copies of the same tablet in different libraries. So it's not something that's just silly children's tales. Now, this is... It starts off by, after the kingship descended from heaven, the kingship was in Eridu. In Eridu, Alulam became the king. He was the one that came from the borough. Now, you can laugh all you want, but if you don't examine the history and examine the things the way I have, then you, you, it's irrelevant that you laugh. Now, he ruled for 28,800 years. These people are immortal. The next one ruled for 36,000 years. All right, so I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but all of this is this is all transcribed from the text. This is these are all tablets, and and uh, it tells all about and the kings and when they ruled and what they did and all of that business. And Anki uh, Anki tells the story of the tragedies that happened on Earth. And if you don't study, you don't study. So I can't help you if you don't study. Now I'm going to give you the timeline. You make a decision if you think it's right or not. All right, this guy is going to show you precisely what happened and explain it. Cataclysmic events are very close, it says, take two place. Here we have the orbit of the Earth with its moon moving round it. Inside this orbit was the orbit of the planet Mars. Outside this orbit, there is the orbit of the giant planet Jupiter. Note, no planet Venus. Note, Mars is inside the Earth's orbit. Velikovsky believes that about 1500 BC, Jupiter erupted, giving birth to what became the planet Venus. The planet Venus, in this runaway orbit, passed by the Earth, disturbing the Moon and the Earth, causing great cat cataclysms on the Earth. Then, some hundreds of years later, made a close pass by the planet Mars, disturbing Mars in its orbit, and sending Mars out to make another close pass with further cataclysms by the planet Earth. Subsequently, at about 750 BC, Venus settled down in its nice circular orbit round the Sun and Mars settled down in its present elliptic orbit outside the orbit of the Earth. All right, now he said Velikowski believes. Well, Velikowski literally read the, the actual text. There was no computers back when this was done. This was, he did his work in the 40s and 50s. And, um, and he literally went to all of these places, to museums, to... Um, all of these different places where they had these actual documents, papyruses, and, and, and he's, a, he's a, um, a 
I, I believe he's like a Palestinian Jew or something. He has all, a lot of he, he he knew how to read all this stuff. He knew how, and he's worked on this. He was a he was a, a buddy of uh, Einstein's, and they sort of put him down because he was outside what they considered to be their mainstream. And this is just continuing on today to the exact same thing. And they, they're fighting my mud fossils. I have DNA CAT scans, all that stuff, and they just won't even allow it because it literally proves that all this stuff is is probably quite true. All right, this is going to be totally shocking, but it's it's factually the only thing I can come with factually because it's chemistry and it's written text. Now, here's a historical timeline, and this is all recorded. This is not something I'm making up. Now, the sources I'm using are Sumerian tablets, the artifacts that exist, texts, and Velikovsky, Emanuel Velikovsky, who was literally destroyed by academia for for going out and doing actual research. He went out and, and researched all these texts. Now, uh, I'm relying on some of his work, but not a whole lot. Now, the Anunnaki was recorded, and you saw the um, King's List, 450,000 years ago they came here. And it talks about how they got here and when they landed and how they came out of the water, and it took them six days to set up camp, and, you know, and then they rested on the seventh day. Now, I've seen that somewhere else. Now, let's go into, let's walk all the way down through history till we hit Atlantis. Now, Atlantis collapsed at 11,400 years ago, according to Plato and Solon. Uh, and, and at that point, and in Herodotus's map of 450 BC shows Atlantis exactly where it is. Uh, and I have a video on it. It's the Eye of the Sahara. And it collapsed, and that's really just very little dispute about that. And it fits the exact date and time and size and every single detail, and, and Herodotus puts it there too, so I'm not going to fight with those guys, I think they're right. Now, what happened next? Let's go down way more into history. Venus was literally born 1500 BC, and it says in the Bible that it was the Son of God, that Venus was born well, I don't know if it was Venus, but it says the Son of God was born from, uh, uh, look it up, Revelations 12. It's from Revelations 12. She was standing on the moon, her feet were on the moon, pregnant, about to give birth. She gave birth to a male son in space. And God swooped down and took the child before dragons ate him. That's what it says. And, it's, and, and I can tell you, I have evidence to show that that's true. <laughs> Listen to me, just keep going. Exodus happened exactly at the same time, 1500 BC. Emmanuel Velikowski says that Venus was born, and he has all the documents. It was recorded everywhere on the earth that this happened. Venus was born as a bright star, uh, as a comet, as bright as the sun. And I, you, you, I'll give you all the stuff to look up. Well, you look it up. You look. People should do their own research. Look up Velikovsky. I have all, all the evidence for this, and I have all the videos on uh, my Mud Fossils channel. But anyway, so Exodus happened, 1500 B.C. So now the, the, the Israelites literally escaped under these destructive conditions that happened as Venus was born because it attacked the Earth, literally. It, it, it almost hit the Earth. It knocked Mars out. All kinds of things happened. And I will show you literal video to, to show you what that event was like. Now, what does the Bible say? 1500 B.C., the Bible starts. That's the first text we're written, they say, somewhere around 1500 B.C. Now we get down to where you get to Genesis 6.4. Giants in the earth. Well, yes, there was giants in the earth, and I have found them, and I have them DNA tested, and that's not even debatable. So, there's giants in the earth. Well, they, they talk about the giants being the earth, being the sons of, uh, being the new giants that were born to the daughters of man and sons of God, and they were the men of Ramon, the men of old. Well, that's, that's totally misunderstood. The, it, the way it should have been worded was, there were giants in the earth in those days, and really, literally, they were the titans. <laughs> They were the, the oldest, oldest giants that were written of in the ancient antiquities that created the earth, literally. Those were the titans, the giants that were in the earth in those days. They were the men of old, the men of renown. Then after that, when the sons of God went into the daughters of man, that's the way it should have been read. 
And that's the way, it can only be read that way. How can the new giants be the old men of renown? So let's go pick, now I'm going to tell you something that's going to blow your mind. All right, here we go. All right, here it is. In the Bible, Adam was born 6,000 years ago. Now, this is a very, very stable timeline. They tell how old the guy was, how old his son was born, how old he was when his son was born, and, and it goes right down the line. And, and by the Bible, Adam was born 6,000 years ago. I mean, these are all give or takes. Now, Christian God arrives 6,000 years ago in my mind. That's how I see it. Christian God here got here 6,000 years ago with, with Adam and and constructed Adam out of the dirt that was in the ground. Now, remember that, out of the dirt that was in the ground. Now, in the Revelations 12, it says God's Son was born from Venus's eruption. He was born in space. 3,500 years ago, born in space. And then Jesus claimed it was his body that fell out of the space. And he said, truly, 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 you have to believe me. I am the bread of life. I fell out of space and fed the Jews in the desert. And what fell? Dried blood. I mean, dried milk. And what is dried milk? It, the only source I can think of for pellets of dried milk is a gelatinous placenta that comes through space and atomizes into raindrops, literally, of dried milk. And the reason it's milk, when a baby is born, the placenta is flooded with lacto uh, lactic products, lactose, really. And it happens immediately at the instant of birth. It's flooded with this uh, literal feeding of the baby. Uh, exactly the same stuff that is, is the, the, the lactose that the baby drinks. So, I don't know if you can come up with some other way that that stuff got into, got uh, got. And, and Jesus said it was me. And they went crazy. They said, how can you say this? And he said, I'm telling you, it's true. And it, anyway, you have to read all these passages yourself. I, I, well, I have them all online. I have all this stuff documented. But that's all I can tell you. This is the history that I see. Now, could be totally wrong. All of those people could be lying. But I added everything up, and this is what I came out with. So, I, the problem I got is solved by the research that I did. Although you can't take that God created the earth, literally, in the six days. Because that would have been the Anunnaki. They said it took them six days to set up camp here. The earth was here. They didn't create it. Now, I have found that all of the planets and everything are literally creatures. Not similar to creatures. They're literally creatures. Now, I'm going to show you what Velikowski came up with, and then you can think it over. And you know that they talked about the gods, planets, Jupiter, Mars, all of this stuff were literal creatures to them, and they are literally creatures. Okay, don't forget, he, he made us out of clay. These are kaolin clays. You see the different colors? <laughs> That's about all the different colors of people. Now, and that is skin. That is literally skin. I'm serious. That is skin. And they use that to make fine china because it's the most fine, powdery skin that you can have. And um, anyway, I, I showed you the other stuff about Velikowski before. But this is literally the clay that made Adam. Now, where did it come from? It came from the earth. What's in the earth? Giants. You follow where I'm going? They said, don't mess around with the people that were made out of the earth because they're giants. And, you know, if you mess around with them, who knows what's going to happen. Well, they did. They got giants in Enoch's stead. They were two and a half miles tall, 3,000 L's. And that was just two and a half miles. And there's no question whatsoever. He was right. All right. A lot of this is based on mud fossil research. That's how I got started on it. And I was for, more or less forced into this because nobody would come on board and, and even look at any of this stuff. So, uh, you know, as a material chemist sort of person, I, I went through and I verified the chemistry was true. Then I had a DNA verified, CAT scan, and there's several of these. Every one of the things that you see in front of you there was, a, was alive and is a, f a body part of a creature. And, uh, fract, fract up, you know, pieces of them. Uh, now, totally verified. So, let's go into the timeline of history. All right, and I'm going to show you that right now. 
All right, I'm going to be offering courses. Well, I'm offering them now on Mud Fossil University. There's no charge or anything. And they're really not courses. They're just videos showing you the reality of, of, um, of the truth of what chemistry shows and what uh, the texts are. And, and, you know, an honest investigation. I'm not going to just read to anybody. I'm going to show the evidence and you make your own decision. And that's the way I think you should get educated. Because if you go to school and learn what they're telling you about theory, you're wasting your time. Absolutely total waste. Geology is not even close to what they're telling you. These are all living creatures that created these rocks and things. The earth is literally a living creature. Comet 67P is literally a body part floating in space and, and meteors that hit the Earth were alive. This is not something that's even contestable. It just has to be looked at and it's refused. So, and, and giants were alive and it's just it's, it's, it's silly to, to not look at this. So, don't follow academia. They are not helping you. They're hurting you. They're holding you down to the reality of your life. And this is what I'm going to bring you up to. And there's no charge. You go there, you see what you think. But share it with other people because you're going to be living in a new universe, literally. I've been literally driven from society. I mean, truly. You cannot speak your mind about this and, and, and go into a real world and have people accept you. It's going to be a battle. You're going to be fought against, but you're just going to have to point them toward this. And I, I present evidence with everything. It's not something that you can that they can even dispute you. What they'll end up saying is, I'm not going to talk to you about this. It's silly. You don't know what you're talking about. They won't confront the evidence. And not one single challenge, not a single challenge from Yale, Harvard, Johns Hopkins, University of Texas, every single one of them. I've presented them face to face with this, hard hitting with this, as hard as I could hit them. And they all walked away saying there's just nothing to it. Even Yale, just recently has disavowed this, presented with DNA and oh, I looked at it, there's nothing there. How could he possibly dismiss this evidence as a true researcher and, and, and teacher of truth? Very, very difficult for me to understand. So, you make up your own mind. It's up to you. All right? And I hope you do. I hope you pay close attention because this is reality. But again, you're going, to have, you're going to get beaten up. I can tell you that for a fact. I find this is the easiest way to make the point there was giants in the earth in those days. Now, pretty obvious. Now, and, and there's a lot of this. This is not just a singularity here. They are all over the place. Let me just show you something else. Now that's Stonehenge, and that is a foot, and there's no question about it. It has all the ar ar architecture of a foot, the anatomy. I can tell you that the chemicals are there. I can see the red and the black where the veins and the arteries are. It's a foot. It goes under the ground exactly the same size. There's, the, the blood supplies are back in here where, where you expect them. Now, the reason these mud fossils are here is because of the Great Flood. And when did the Great Flood happen? That's the question, and I, I'm going to explain to you why, why they preserved in the manner they preserved. When something is in the wet conditions, especially in a, a, like an organic soup, literally, all the creatures in the earth literally drown at the same time. Uh, you know, some of them escaped, I know that's a fact. Um, now, they, they don't rot. They don't rot like they do when they fall on the ground. So, in, in the course of being literally pickled and preserved in this briny organic soup, they get coated with, a, because there's electric currents, they're called telluric currents, and they, those are in waters and so forth, and they literally plate the silicon that's on skin, it's 50 times more dense silicon, and that's on your skin, and it gets plated like, and they're called platypolar silicates, they get plated like shingles on a house, and that preserves what's ever inside the thing, and then when they drop to the, uh, in, uh, under the mud, they get preserved under the mud. That's what a mud fossil is, and that's why these are here, and when the waters ran off or whatever happened, they were exposed, and that's why they're laying on the surface of the earth, they're not deep inside. And this is, is not long ago, and it was, um, it was apparent, it was all written down in history, it was a great flood, and I'll tell you when that happened. All right, so now we got to decide about the flood, and this is creation.com, and I've looked through this, and it's, it's, it's 
pretty historical. It's telling how, how old these people were and how many years between each guy and all this stuff. And it gets down to where it says the placing of the catastrophic global flood in the year 2304. And, and, and that's a BC. And I go along with that. That's about what I came up with. I, came, I hear anywhere between 2300 and, you know, 2200, 2400, right in that age. Right? So let's go with 2300. Um, so you got 2300 BC, so that's 4,300 years ago. And Enoch, I mean, um, Noah existed when? All right, so how do we figure this out? Now, Noah was, um, was 600 years old when Methuselah died, and which was the same year the flood started. So Noah was 600, and there's 1,100 years gap between Adam and the birth of Noah. So 1,100 plus 600 is 1,700, and 4,300 years ago makes 6,000 years. So that's what the Bible says, 6,000 years, so let's go with that. That's what the Bible's talking about, and that's when God got here and he created Adam and all that business. But the problem I got is what happened in the media. How did the giants get into earth? 